So break out those crystal balls. Ooh. On the DraftKings Sportsbook, there are some way too early Super Bowl odds and MVP odds. Pierce, what's your approach here to betting NFL futures right now? Uh, I would pump the brakes, but I wouldn't say that you just completely don't bet at all. But I'm not going to go at some of these uh, favorites because just so many things can go wrong during a season that I, I, I just don't think that anyone really is a favorite. We don't have, we haven't drafted yet. We haven't gone through free agency yet. We haven't gone through uh, training camps. Players can emerge, players can develop. If I'm going to do anything, I put down kind of a smaller bet on some of these long shots and hope that uh, you know they draft well or they get some free agents and players develop. One of the teams that you might want to look at, and it sounds crazy, but the plus 10,000 Jaguars. Yeah! Now, I'm not saying mortgage the house on it, but if you look at when they were one game away from the Super Bowl a couple seasons ago, the year before that they were three and thirteen. The year before that they were five and eleven. The year before that they were three and thirteen. So they weren't necessarily trending in the right direction. And even, even during that season, Blake Bortles was their quarterback. They didn't have a receiver catch more than sixty passes. They didn't have a receiver catch for more than seven hundred and fifty yards. Leonard Fournette barely eclipsed a thousand yards. Yes, they had a good defense. But it wasn't a great defense. I mean, we can barely remember that defense at all. I mean, it was good. It was definitely above average. It was a solid defense that season. But it's nothing that you know, people probably can't remember half the players that were on it. And you look at the, what this defense did last season. It wasn't great, but it's trending in the right direction. They did hold the Buffalo Bills to six points. Anything can happen. They're not in a very tough division. They can make the playoffs, maybe catch some breaks like they did that, that, that season. Uh, you know, it's worth a small little bet. Pierce, did we just become best friends? No. <laughs> hey, quick answer. Hey, Maddie. No, that was a terrible answer. That was, was actually the worst answer, answer you've though, ever given on this but show. But it was quick. Maddie, are you playing a wait and see game here with uh, most of these futures on the DK Sportsbook? For the most part, I, I like what Pierce was talking about going with longer odds for this part of the offseason because, yeah, you could definitely get burned if you, let's say, pick the Green Bay Packers and Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams don't end up being there. So I think there's more to lose with a lot of these favorites. Uh, but I'd still, there's one team in kind of the mid tier that I do like for both Super Bowl futures and for the MVP. That's the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, Lamar Jackson's 28 to 1. The Ravens are about 20 to 1 to win the Super Bowl. I just think there are a lot of ways this team could improve going into next year. And most of it has to do with their own health. Like they don't necessarily need to add anyone to become a really good team. It, just to me, this is the team that underachieved the most last season. So. Even though the odds are a little shorter and I'm a little wary of it, like Pierce talked about, I still think the Ravens deserve to be in the same category as teams like the Cowboys and the 49ers, and they're just a little bit undervalued. Lamar Jackson at 28 to 1. Maybe he should be 15 or 20 to 1. I don't think he's going to win MVP this year, but I do think he'll be in the conversation. So, like, that whole organization just seems undervalued to me. Mm -hmm. All right, speaking of the division winner odds, is there a team in the AFC whose odds to win their division jump out to you right now, Matt? And the AFC East, Pats are plus 330. Oh, stop it. Can I, can I use that one? I, like, <laughs> I do actually <laughs> like that no. one. Yeah, I know. You're terrible. I'm just, I know, I know. I am. <laughs> but <laughs> New England was the favorite in the AFC East for a decent chunk of last year and kind of just fell apart at the end. I mean, Mac Jones should be better this year. I don't know if we can say that about Josh Allen. Like, Josh Allen was unbelievably good this past season, but he, he wasn't a rookie. Like, we, we're not necessarily going to expect him to improve. I think he'll be very, very good. But New England had a really good team around Mac Jones. Maybe they had some wide receivers. That was probably a weak spot for them. Uh, the defense gets a little better. Like, I think there's a lot of ways this team could wind up being better. Obviously, the biggest problem for the Patriots in the division is just how good the Bills are. So this is not an anti-Bills take by any stretch, but it does seem to me like the odds should be a little bit closer. All right, Pierce, what do you think? Steelers plus 650. I mean, let's give them some credit. They did make the playoffs last season. Say what you want. End of the day, they were in the playoffs, and I think that they're going to be even you know that much better this season. I know Matt's not a big Najee Harris fan, but the guy had the fourth most rushing yards last season with 1,200, and that was with – Absolutely no offensive line at all. He was still able to get that many yards. And really, no quarterback. Quarterback that would only throw to his first read, wouldn't move the ball downfield, didn't get any help. So I imagine anyone they put a quarterback is going to help Harris. Anyone they put a quarterback is going to be an upgrade for this pretty solid receiving core. The offensive line cannot get any worse. And so I just don't see how they don't make the playoffs and possibly win the division. You look on the defensive side, they've already got the pass rush. 
One of the problems they struggled, though, was defending the pass and against the run. But they had Stefan Tuitt was out for the season. Bush was not 100% healthy. Uh, Tyson Alulu will be back. And then they added Brian Flores as a coach. Now, whatever, you know, the outside football stuff, all that noise, we can ignore it. We know that he's a good defensive coach, was great in New England was a fine coach in Miami. He's going to improve that defense. I think we might be overreacting to one poor season by the Steelers. I think they're going to go right back to the top of the AFC North. All right, uh, Pierce, talk to me about an NFC team you like in the division. Yeah. I need this. About the Washington Commanders. Whoa. This is not a division that is really that good. I know the Cowboys get a lot of credit, but the, the Cowboys aren't the best team. I mean, their defense improved last season in terms of turnovers, but overall it wasn't the greatest defense. Uh, their rush attack is questionable. Their offensive line is going to be one season older. And if you look at where Deshaun Watson is favored to land, it's the Washington Commanders. And if they add Deshaun Watson, then I think they absolutely, if he's allowed to play, become one of the favorites. Now, if they can't get him, I think Heineke's going to develop. And if they don't get Heineke to develop, maybe they go with Mitchell Trubisky. They've got the running backs. They have a decent receiving core. They need to improve the offensive line. But the defense is there. You look down the stretch, that defense really started to gel under Ron Rivera. Seven of the last ten games, they held their opponents to under 21 points. Uh, almost was eight out of ten, if you don't count a defensive touchdown by the Dallas Cowboys. They ran into some poor great games down the road because they were dealing with tons of injuries and COVID situations. But they've got a good defense. Most, most of you know the foundation is there. They just need to improve the quarterback play. I don't think this one is a far shot at all. Okay, Maddie, how about, how about you? What do you think? Eagles have better odds in that division than the Commanders. Yeah, I'm probably looking to the NFC North, though, just because of the Aaron Rodgers thing, just to keep teasing this a little bit. Uh, also, to Pierce's point about Najee Harris, it's not that I don't like him. It's that I dislike every single running back in the NFL. They're all overvalued. Every single one of them is bad. So that, that's where that take is. But I, I still think that looking at the Minnesota Vikings, who do have Dalvin Cook, that could be interesting just given the uncertainty with Aaron Rodgers. And this might seem like an obvious take, but just looking at the odds here, like I don't think the division odds are reflecting the uncertainty with Rodgers in the same way that other markets are. I think minus 165 for the Packers and plus 275 for the Vikings are numbers that are actually not that far off from where they'll be if Rodgers, if Rodgers we know is with the Packers, if we get that confirmation. It seems like it's kind of priced in already. So if you have the chance that he's not there, um, the Vikings probably become the division favorites at that point. And we have a precedent for this because this happened last season where we had a week or so where we thought Rodgers wasn't going to be with the Packers and the division odds closed to where they were almost even between these two teams. I don't think much has really changed, and we're just getting a repeat of last year. So I think going after the Vikings and maybe even the other two teams, the Bears and the Lions, that makes some sense right now. Mm. All right, you guys have both already mentioned him, but we are anticipating like a lot of quarterback movement, especially yeah. with Aaron Rodgers and that cryptic Monday Night Gratitude Instagram post. That was disgusting. Yeah. Like, what, some of the things he did to his body. Yeah, we learned some details Lots of liquids. about the retreat he went on. Uh, where is he playing next year, Pierce? This might come to surprise to some, but I don't have Instagram, so I have no idea what you guys are talking about. Wow. There was something Dude. during a retreat You're he on went Twitter. on. There was some allegedly therapeutic vomiting. Yeah, and there were enemas involved. He did all yeah. sorts of uh, weird stuff. He did like a two-week detox, Ayahuasca. and it was, yeah, pro I mean, probably. Yeah, was, you've probably, you're a book guy. You've probably read a book about this. <laughs> they went on like a, a vision quest. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. you, you detox. Would probably do to him. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe that's the thing. You open his mind up, and he can see, you know. He's filled with gratitude now. He was open before they're open. I don't know. I think he's staying put. Yeah. Where is he going to go? I, I don't. Who can afford the trade that's going to be required? I wouldn't want to spend what you're going to have to spend to get Aaron Rodgers. Just stay in place. Keep everything the same. Stop changing things around. I don't think he's moving. I really don't. I know that Denver is top of the list, and they have some receivers that they get. Like whatever they move to get him, then he's going to go to a bad situation that he's not going to want to be a part of. I, I, I'm actually more interested in the Russell Wilson thing. I know you guys don't care about the Russell Wilson. No, that's producer Drew, not us. Producer Drew does not care about it. What do you think about Russell Wilson? You could toss it in there. Well, it's the same thing. I don't think that Russell Wilson, I think Russell Wilson's a better story because he's washed up and I just like mentioning that he doesn't really have it anymore. And people okay. like to think that, oh, well, these guys can just go to a different team like Tom Brady jumping down to Tampa. 
Well, Tom Brady was a, a, a pocket passer. And so if you just blocked for him and gave him receivers, which he didn't have in New England, of course he's going to improve. But Russell Wilson can't just jump on another team. His skill set is depreciating. He cannot run around. He cannot make things happen. And so since he's not worth anything, no one's going to trade for him. No one's going to forfeit any packs. If, if he were a free agent, I think I would jump all over Russell Wilson. But the you know, people think that maybe Washington is going to trade for Russell Wilson. I think that's crazy. Why would you give up dra- draft picks for this guy? Um, I think they all just end up staying in place. And we are going to talk for a month about where these guys are going to go, and nothing's going to happen. Matt, there's another team that lost a veteran quarterback, the Bucks. He's plus 1,400 to go to the Bucks. What do we think? I think they're one of many possible choices that are realistic. Like, I think he could kind of go anywhere. I feel like I need my own vision quest to just channel the energy to understand, like, what <laughs> what is Aaron Rodgers thinking, and then just summon that. <laughs> Otherwise, I don't know how else to predict what he's going to do. He just seems like a total wild card right now, so... Ultimately, yes, I think the Packers are the most likely destination, but at minus 250, I don't think it's worth betting that. I don't think it's likely enough to make that bet. Uh, This is probably one to just watch for entertainment. I really don't have a strong opinion on this, but I do think like the fact that a bunch of these teams are between 10 and 20 to one, like the Buccaneers, is indicative of it being at least realistic that he could choose a third of the teams in the NFL, like it's all on the table. Uh, He probably does stay in Green Bay, but I think we... I don't think anyone would be surprised if he made a random choice, especially after what he's been doing the last two weeks. Hey, do you hate Russell Wilson as much as Pierce does? No, I, I don't. I don't have a long answer for that. I think he's. I mean, he's definitely getting worse. Like there are clear signs of decline, which are not there for Aaron Rodgers. So, uh, okay. yeah, I'd rather have Rodgers now, despite all this off the field stuff. Um, it- Wilson, I'm concerned about his health and just his play o- over the last couple seasons. Um, I would much rather have Aaron Rodgers right now. Do you see a change of scenery, though, helping Wilson? Yes, but not enough where he's going to suddenly become, you know, the level that he was four or five years ago. Okay. Um, but, yeah, like, if if a team that doesn't have a quarterback right now is able to acquire him, it certainly would help. But, yeah, we, we I think the, the under-talked-about issues with Wilson are uh, are his health and the injuries and all the things he's dealt with and it is true if you're a quarterback who's relying on athleticism switching teams is harder but also recovering from injuries and aging is harder because you can't just go back to your arm and your accuracy and all those things like those those tend to age better just look at Tom Brady okay. um, all of the athletic ability that's a little bit harder to keep up over time so yeah I think Wilson will bounce back a little bit but I think the days of him being an elite quarterback are probably gone.